Hello and welcome back, and that is right, we are continuing with the subject of SSDs. SSD, it's been real SSD heavy in January 2024, but we are going to continue it because we want to talk about this, the 2023 released SK Hynix Platinum P41. This is a Gen 4 SSD that I would argue is pretty much being made with PlayStation in mind, but I would say there are a lot of PC gamers that could really benefit from this. One of the decisions we made here on the channel last year, we talked a lot about SSDs, and I Arguably, the Gen 4 sector of SSDs is somewhat oversaturated, let's be honest. But we are starting to see, now that Gen 4 is largely established, we're seeing very unique products arrive. And we really want to look at the quirky, out there SSDs that are bringing something new to the table, which is exactly why this drive is here on the table. Why is it quirky and unique? Because it's utilizing a controller that, try as I might, I can barely find anywhere else. Ares ACN S075 controller. Not using a Fizon, not using the inner disk, not using any of the ones that you already know about. SK Hynix is a brand that's been around in the world of popular prosumer and enterprise SSDs for a very, very long time. If you grab yourself a screwdriver or a hammer, I don't know your life, and you open up your laptop, chances are there's components in there from SK Hynix. Chances are if you bought an SSD in the last one, two billion years, chances are there is SK Hynix, NAND, SK Hynix, DRAM, SK Hynix components on board. Yet! Yeah. Very few users seem to know that they released their own full bish bash bosh ground up SSDs like this one. Now, this SSD arriving with that controller, the R8 on board, um, is available currently in um, 512, 1TB and 2TB configurations at $59, $105 and $162 over on Amazon with promise. Uh, performance numbers at 7,000 megabytes per second over 6,500 megabytes per second. These are numbers that you would largely associate up to this point with the Fizon controllers in the market right now. But alongside that sequential read-write performance, synthetic of course, their IOPS performance are significantly higher than most of the other drives out there in the market with 4K random IOPS at 1.4 million and 4K random re, uh, sorry, write IOPS of 1.3 million. Those are serious numbers for a drive that at <clears throat> 2TB you can pick up for $160. That is something to write home about there. Now, currently, this drive has been available in the market for the better part of four to five months, and in more recent times, they've rolled out a new PlayStation 5 heatsink. Now, we're going to be doing a dedicated PlayStation 5 video where we are going to talk about both that drive and um, this heatsink here which I wanted to include in this video just because I think it's very easy on the eye that is a lovely looking heatsink there and obviously you can use it with any SSD in the market but it's clearly being designed with this SSD in mind so we will be talking about that in a future video there but I did want to factor it in in case you are a PS5 drive, uh, buyer that is considering this SSD and it's quite good to know that there are bundles in the market right now don't be surprised if SK Hynix rock out some kind of buyer's bundle on this one but this is the 1TB model here. It's utilizing one side of uh, PCB population. Back of the drive has got no available chips. It's a bare PCB there. It doesn't take advantage of any kind of uh, additional heat shielding on there. It's just a standard sticker there at the top. I'm sure we've got some screen scratch there on screen showing you the NAND layout there, the controller. And again, that is the SK Hynix controller alongside SK Hynix um, uh, DRAM along SK Hynix uh, NAND there on board. And that's 176 layer, 1600 mega transfers per second NAND there for that SSD controller. Now, the SSD controller is an R8 um, architecture. So that's the ARM32 R8, which is higher in architecture than that of the Fizon E18, which was released around about three years ago, I, maybe two and a half years. Now, there's a more advanced controller and therefore has better management and uh, saturation uh, management. But do bear in mind, it has fewer cores than that of the uh, Fizon E18 controller found in the majority of SSDs in the market, which can lead to, although better power efficiency, it does mean you've got fewer cores that you can assign to those multiple transfers at any given time, which although is more prevalent in general PC multi-core architecture, it is still a factor with multiple transfers going on simultaneously to an SSD. Those multiple cores can be beneficial. Um, now the NAND, uh, sorry, the DRAM that this drive arrives with, rocking out the gate with one uh, GB of uh, low power or LPDDR4 memory on the one TB and of course two gig on the two 
UTB is fairly standard in the marketplace. But once again, the thing that makes this non-standard is the fact that all of those components are in-house, something we largely associate with companies like uh, Samsung and WD when it comes to SSDs that keep it all in-house using their own branded company components or subsidiaries. SK Hynix, a brand that has lived on the fringe, arguably, in the world of SSDs alongside giants like Fizon, is now stepping out on their own a great deal more with their SSDs. And I'm going to be really intrigued to see how they approach the Gen 5 series of drives. Because this series has been popular and reviewed very, very well in reviews I could find online last year from the big people. Your tech spots, your uh, storage review, the, uh, the SSD review. This drive has reviewed very, very well. And in preparation for this, of course, I wanted to see what the benchmarks would be before I went down my own road of checking them out. And I'll tell you right now, this drive looks like it's going to do very, very well. And obviously, we will go through the benchmarks now. We will be doing the PS5 testing uh, on its own very, very soon. The last thing I want to talk about is durability, rocking out the gate with a five-year manufacturer's warranty. Fairly standard. And... Uh, although we could talk about the terabytes written across each of the capacities, I always prefer to talk about DWPD, drive rights per day, and the drive is rocking out with a 0 0.4 drive rights per day, which is a fairly standard industry um, uh, um, standard, I would say, or at least quantity there for drive rights per day. Um, if I had to critique this drive, I would say at the moment 2TB in 2024 when 4TB drives are exceedingly prevalent is something uh, of a problem. I think a lot of users would much rather have this drive in a larger capacity given the uh, single proprietary build on this. And SK Hynix, they do make 4TB drives. So it's not like they don't have uh, the, that kind of component quantity in-house. But that's enough of the old jibber-jabber. Let's head over to the test machine and put this thing through its paces and also check out the temperature of this drive when in operation because right now we are not going to be using a heat sink on this drive. This drive has been supplied with no heat sink, so we're not going to attach one. We're going to have it running bare on its own without the heat sink. And of course, later in another video when we do our PS5 testing, it's going to be really cool to see how this drive and this heat sink play. But for now, let's head to the test machine and put this drive through its paces. Okay, so we've made our way onto the desktop PC here. There's that official page. And just to remind ourselves of those specifications, which are going to come up later on, um, I think it's worth highlighting that this SSD, the pricing on it is a little all over the place. The official price is here, listed on their own website here. Again, that is a launch price, an RRP, if you will. And if you do look at the pricing now these days, it's actually a little bit better. Although availability, um, particularly in the 1TB, I found slightly harder. The 2TB, I'm finding a little bit more available around the place. But still, nonetheless, the price Pricing is a little better than their website does seemingly indicate. And if we look at the specifications there again, is that rather unique Gen 4 processor there, that Ares controller. Um, but when we go through a lot of the specifications, it pretty much confirms everything we've seen. Again, I'll link to this page in the description. We can find out more information about the general makeup of this SSD. And it's, you know, general build quality, I would say, is comparable to a lot of the Fizon uh, SSDs currently in the market. And again, as mentioned earlier, it has kind of introduced itself midway through 2023 into a arguably more oversaturated market for Gen 4. But still, at least this is a unique drive that stands on its own and not being overly reliant on some of the other components we've seen in the market. Again, with the oversaturation of Fizon drives there, I think this is always good for any industry. And at least at the very least, because it's SK Hynix and their NAN structure and the drives they're going for, you are ending up with a decent amount of uh, robust storage there now when it comes to the performance <clears throat> early testing here was very very positive using crystal disk we can see that it has surpassed the 7100 mark um, in megabytes per second for that sequential read in all four of our tests starting at one gig all the way down to 64 gig there but what was particularly nice was that sustained write. bear in mind that a lot of the time when we look at websites and the promotion of the stats and the performance numbers they share more often than not, the numbers you are looking at are using higher-end AMD Ryzen 9 processors and insane i9 octa-core Xeon base type stuff. All of these kind of hardware, obviously you expect to get the very best performance, but given I'm running a machine here that's running on a comparatively, and the keyword comparatively there, modest 12th gen i5 processor here on a desktop PC with 16 gig of memory alongside just a standard Windows 10 version with no GPU card inside to maybe take some of the off the kind of 
the overhead there, it's pretty impressive that this uh, system here was still more than able to hit those sequential numbers uh, dictated by the specifications. And indeed, although the write performance is being somewhat hampered by the OS drive on this system, not being able to fully unlock the right performance, I would say that most certainly you can see the IOPS numbers there reported at 1.4 for uh, 4K random IOPS and seeing it right there at 1.4 consistently throughout all of those tests. Now, the drive itself we had running for quite an extensive period of time. We had it running for over 200 hours and you can see from Crystal Dismar a lot of the information, the general stuff running on a four times four lane there. What's really intriguing was the temperature now that uh, heat sink that this drive um, did not arrive with, we can see that the base level non PS5 heat sink there, even without this drive running with a heat sink surrounding it, it still achieved pretty reasonable numbers. It's got that heat spreader, but still only hitting a height of 55 during the most extensive Atto testing is still pretty impressive as far as I'm concerned. And there was a, a test, um, each test uh, had approximately two to three minutes pause. You can see the spikes in the majority of these testing throughout, but only hitting 55 degrees is pretty impressive again. And it's just another mark of that controller because that is ultimately where this temperature is coming from, being a pretty consistent performer there. Now, if we move away from those and make our way into Atto Disk Benchmark, we can find out three more tests here using a quarter of a gig, a one gig, and a four gigabyte file there. And although, let's get the um, read and write performance numbers up first, we can see that obviously there's the translation between gigabytes per second versus that of the megabytes per second we mentioned earlier on. But when we convert to gigabytes per second, it's still very consistent, healthy numbers all the way through. Again, with no real oversaturation, no drop, and any concerns that I may have had about this um, SSD controller may not being, you know, having the same pedigree as that as a Fizon, was still pretty impressive indeed. And if we make our look into the IOPS, obviously these are relative to the file sizes we're going for, but they're still healthy numbers relative to the file sizes there. Now, if we make our way out of that, we can make our way into ASSSD. ASSSD here. We've got that here with them reading right there. Again, ASSSD is slightly different um, kind of uh, benchmark algorithm compared to the other two benchmarking tools we've used. Consequently, the numbers will appear at a glance that they are lower. But take my word for it, these are still very good numbers for this drive. To put that into some kind of perspective, if we make our way into my backlog of other SSDs that we've tested here in the past, we can look at something like, let's find ourselves another 1TB drive. Let's go for the verbatim. The verbatim here, that util, oh, maybe not that because we don't have the images. We'll go for the, let's scroll along. The Fire Cuda. Now, this is a Fizon E, um, a Fizon E18 um, controller here, and we can see comparing these numbers side by side that if we compare the Seagate Fire Cuda 530, another popular uh, Gen 4 drive, we can see that the numbers certainly surpassed that of the Fire Cuda with both of these drives at 1 TB. And if that logic does extend even further as we compare against each tier of our testing regimen, both of which were running on this machine, and on all occasions, as you can see, continuing uh, the uh, SK Hynix drive here was superior overall. And that, again, was a very pleasing sign there with that controller that's arguably less uh, available and um, uh, um, just used in an oversaturated marketplace, really. Um, so if we come out of that, we go into our final tests here, and these were taking advantage of AJA. Now, I don't want you to look at the top number. The top number isn't hugely relevant here. What we want to look at are these charts at the bottom. And what we're looking for is drops, oversaturation and over consistent, uh, under, un inconsistencies in the read write operations. And you can see there that it's a very consistent through line for all of them. We saw the odd drop there. Uh, again, some of these tests were recurrent, some of them were single tests, but to put it into perspective, if we go ahead and use the one gig, and these are all 5K reg files here, and we run that test once again. Although the top numbers are gonna keep hitting high, it will only go for a certain amount of time before we suffer oversaturation. And that is when the DRAM there, the memory on that SSD is just getting over tasked with too much data being flowed. But I'll say right now for a Gen 4 SSD right now, I expected this number to drop a lot sooner than it has done. But at this point here, we've written 
you know, somewhere in the region of 30 to 40 uh, gigabytes of data consistently here. And we're still seeing very consistent numbers all the way along. So I'm kind of, you know, overall, overall remarkably pleased with everything we've seen here from this drive. And we'll make our way back into the studio in a moment. But I just wanted to once again highlight to, uh, that throughout all of those tests, <clears throat> If we look at the temperatures, again, this drive only hit highs of 55 without the heat sink, being, uh, without any kind of heat sink to dissipate that heat. So even if you're going to utilize a drive like this in the PS5 and you utilize their heat sink, it's still going to be a very cool drive with or without added heat dissipation, which is, you know, overall very pleasing indeed. But let's make our way back to the studio. Let's be realistic, there's a lot to like about this drive, notwithstanding the fact that it's running its own race by not just adopting the Fizon um, SSD controller that everyone else is using in the Gen 4 sector, that's always going to be appealing to me and I think that's very good for the industry to see that kind of innovation. Also, for SK Hynix to grow the cojones to roll out their own fully proprietary first party drive is great and fantastic for to be a brand that has been around for that long and now be able to stretch their muscles for them to take over their whole drives is good and this is a fantastic example and that controller in board on board allowed for those sustained performance numbers to be as good as they were also we've got to talk about it the uh, temperature that this drive reached was fantastic for this drive to barely scrape into the 50 degree mark when we were doing our most intense test, like that 64 gigabyte test file in Crystal Disk, like the Atto repeated test on this drive, and even the AJA hammering test on there. For this drive to not go Johnny Bananas in terms of temperature is an exceedingly good sign, and therefore adds up to a drive that will hopefully make sure that Fizon doesn't get too you know, cosy, gets too complacent in the Gen 5 era. What do I not like? I don't like that I can't get a 4TB version of this. I don't like that it's got fewer cores than that of the Fizon, and I do think in multiple transfers and a large-scale flash utilization, that can be problematic. I don't like that it doesn't rock out the gate with a heatsink. I think for that price, $162 for 2TB, it is a moderately reasonable price, but I think they could have at the very least thrown in a heat shield. But those small criticisms aside, I think this is a unique drive that in an oversaturated Gen 4 marketplace is going to do very, very well indeed but what do you guys think there is a written review in the description below that you can check out and of course we've referred to a few resources such as the tech spot one we're going to link to those as well so you can find out more about the architecture of that Ares controller from sk hynix and again if you want to learn more there's a review below but also we've linked to a few other resources on this drive and more but if you need help choosing the right ssd for your gaming rig for your editing rig for your nas for whatever use the free advice section linked over on nas compares on the right hand side of every single page go over to our discord go over to our ask.nas compares forum for further support from the community on there or use our expediated support via ko-fi and patreon and of course there is a membership service there to get access to exclusive content early doors and to be able to get access to a lot of these videos early along with our content polls and a lot more interaction with us and of course there is uh, the larger scale consultations you can use in the tiers over there for things like zoom consultations or direct maintenance and upkeep on your devices when needed and a little bit of an overview but more on that in another video do stay tuned uh, on the channel for that sk hynix playstation 5 um heat sink test as well we'll be doing that very soon but apart from that have yourselves a fantastic week